So you were assigned to look up the DNS entries for CNN.com. And if you did a name lookup for that, you should have gotten 157.166.226.25. And you would have also gotten 157.166.226.25. You are also supposed to look up quizlaw.com. Their ad IP address would be 64.131.64.162. And also pajiba.com. Their address was 64.131.64.162. I also gave you a set, <coughs> or the assignment to look up some domains you wanted to buy. I don't really see anything interesting on here, so we'll just leave it. All right, so let's just note that. Look up some you wanted to buy. Just names that seemed interesting, right? Now, luckily, we can explain all we need to with just what we have up here. All right, remember, this is what I typed into my web browser. And so I might as well switch over to my computer. And if we open up our web browser of choice, which my mouse has disappeared. Hello. Come on, mousy, mousy. Where are you? There you are. All right, so if we go up here and we type in, good grief, ay ay ay, cnn.com, we get the CNN website. If I type in 157.166.226.25, which was the first IP address we had, I also get cnn.com. That was lovely. If I change this to dot twenty-six, I also get cnn.com. That's very interesting. So I typed in three different things, the name and those two IP addresses, and every time I got the same page. Now let's try quizlaw. So if I type in quizlaw.com, I get this lovely website here. If I type in pajiba.com, I get a very different website. If I type in that IP address, it was the same IP address for both of them, 64.131.64.162. And I type that in, I get some strange thing that says default web page. That's very interesting, isn't it? Now let's switch back to our overhead. The point I want you to make here, or the main point, here's our point. Number one, I want you to understand the name, name is not an identifier. Okay? The name only points to an IP address. We will talk more about how the name system works, but suffice it to say, it's not the identifier, and we'll just write here, the IP address is. So the IP address refers to a specific host. So if we look up here, we can see in this position where we have all of this, and it's the same IP address, the dot .162. What we're saying here is this number indicates that both of these websites, and we actually could see the default website was a different one too, they are all on the same host. Okay? CNN, on the other hand, you'll notice they had two IP addresses here, and I had a student earlier got one that was in the 148 range, and they had four IP addresses. So some of you might have multiple IP addresses on different subnets. 
But what this means is we have one name and it's going to two different hosts. Okay, so here's lesson number two. Well, we'll just go up here. If we have two IP addresses, it becomes basically a line. So the first person that requests, they will get the 25. Second is going to get 26. The third person will get 25 again. The fourth person is going to get 26. So we can see this becomes basically a line. And as people come in, or as people request this name, one will get this, another will get this. One will get this, another will get this. So that's our lesson number two. If we have multiple, multiple IP addresses, then we are going to distribute the load between or across those hosts. This is basically a load balancing scheme. So sometimes CNN wants you to use this server, sometimes they want you to use this server. And basically it means, you know, if 100 people connect to CNN.com, half of them go here and the other half go here. And so they can use the same server or they can use multiple servers for the, with the same name on it. Distributes their load. So it's sort of the inverse, inverse with these two. These two have the same IP address. That means you can host multiple sites on the same server. So basically what we're looking at here is this web server is meant to host many different websites and that means these individual websites aren't really getting very much traffic. CNN on the other hand gets a lot of traffic and so they want to spread their traffic across multiple servers. Since these don't get very much traffic it makes sense for them to combine them into the same server. So that was fun. So here's our number one rule. Well, number one finding here is the name is not the identifier, the IP address is. So we only, when we type in the name, we only get a pointer to this host. And the IP address is what refers to this specific host. We'll see later, very much later, at the end of the class, we'll actually see how we can type in quizlaw.com and get this one IP address and still get a different uh, page back. But we'll worry about that one later. The last thing to think about was when you looked up the sites you wanted to buy perhaps or if you were thinking about why you would pay a lot of money for a particular name, keep in mind these .com that once anyone has taken a .com address, it belongs to them. So this person that's quizlaw.com, they're at quizlaw.com forever now, and they can do with it whatever they want. That means if I wanted to be quizlaw, I'm stuck. I either have to buy it from him or come up with a new name for my website. That's why Pijiba, I don't know where they came up with that name. That's kind of a funny name. Anyway, so there's Pijiba. Uh, the main popular ones are obviously words. I think I put happy birthday in your thing. But notice here CNN, this is only three letters. Those are very popular. If you want just a few letters, it's a lot easier for people to type them in. And especially if you have a brand like CNN, anyway, a three letter website. And just to note here, when I worked at the racetrack, I'll write this in a different color because this is just an aside, it's not a huge thing. When I worked at the racetrack, we were um, Sam Houston Racepark.com, which is a long thing to type in. That was the full name of our racetrack. But I decided to do SHRP.com, and so we actually had both. I think they still have both. And they both pointed to the same website. But the shrp.com meant that if we had customers that had been around a while, 
and they were used to this shorthand, this is a lot easier to type in. This is something pretty you can put on your brochures, but honestly, I think they use shrp.com now anyway. One thing to take away from this, though, is this is only four letters long. And these, sh the short names have really just gone. I mean, if you wanted, you know, CNN, if you wanted a three letter dot com, you know, just forget it. And a four letter, you might be able to get, you know, CQML.com. But then again, you might not. If I type it in here, let's see if it's available. CQML.com. So we can make these up. It's connected. What's going on? Oh, there we go. I'm going to somewhere. I don't recognize where that is. But there is CQML.com. So like I said, switching back here, these really short letter ones are all taken care of. We'll talk about this again in more detail. But this is a nice start, give you a sense of these different IP addresses and things.